Well, hello. I want to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. Uh, this is the show where I talk about the pens and inks that I'm using this week. And we've got a Platinum 3776 that's going to show up for another unveiling. So let's dive into the pens. <laughs> If you enjoy videos like this where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. And if you'd like to comment on any of the pens you've seen here, or a special topic for the week about backing up your stuff, please feel free to leave a comment down below. So let's take a look at the pens that I'm using this week. So I begin with a My Uber Pens find. Yes, I weekend and bought one. This is a Matador 992, which is an, a German pen from the late 1930s. Then I have a Lamy Ion, um, which is also a German pen, but not from the late 1930s. I have another German pen. This one is from East Germany, probably from the late 50s or early 60s. This is a Garant Alcor. This is another Mayuber pens find. I have my Centro pen, which... I believe it's on its fourth fill of ink. It's probably about due to be washed, rinsed. What's the word I want? That sounded awkward. Anywho, straighten the pile there too. I have my Senator, which was a gift from a viewer. I do not know its model number, so I have been calling it the semi-hooded one. No, I apologize. This is not even a Senator. <laughs> This is a Caveco 37G. This is the Senador, uh, which was a gift from a viewer. I can tell because it says Senator on the clip. And then I have a Waterman Hemisphere, a Caveco V14S, which uh, since the incident with my Lamy 2000 has become my daily writer, and it is a very good daily writer. And we're about to unveil the Platinum 3776, this time with a coarse nib. So those are the pens that I'm using this week. Uh, we'll, we'll dive into a quick writing sample in my Bomo Art Journal. A new Bomo Art Journal, because the other one is filled. Uh, bought them both at the same time, so I suppose it's not really a new notebook. So let's see how they write. So my first pen is a Matador 992, which was made in Germany, late 1930s, I guess... Uh, a little bit of interesting history was going on in Germany right then, but this is about the pen, not about the history. Uh, the Matador company actually stuck around until the 1970s. And parts of this pen are celluloid, parts of them are ebonite. You can see kind of the, probably not in this lighting, but you can see some of the ebonite parts are faded, like the piston turning. Well, it's not a piston turning knob, it's a blind cap, but anyway, it's faded and... You know, a little nick taken out of the threads. Somebody apparently chewed a little on the piston turning knob, which is ew. Um, and then, of course, the cap, I believe, has to be ebonite because it's somewhat faded the way ebonite does. And I, I like that uh, clip. That's a nice design. Uh, a little bit of... Should we call it gyosh? I can't remember the name for it. Anyway, a little patterning on the pen. And the nib, interestingly, 14 karat. Matador. Matador. Okay, so I had to pull that away for a second. Matador. But this says medium. This says extra fine. It was sold as an extra fine, but I have a medium nib on it. So uh, I'm going to revise my show notes and call it a medium because it definitely writes more like a medium. I don't know if that was on purpose. I, I suspect that when my Uber pens restores pens, sometimes they're just doing their best with the supplies they have. Uh, this ink is supposed to be a replica of a vintage ink. You know, you never know with noodlers, and uh, I've learned I've been told not to use them in pens with sacks, but this isn't a pen with a sack. Uh, 
so there's some bounce to this nib. It's, it's a very good writer. Very wet. I look forward to reviewing it down the road. Just an all-around good pen. Jumping ahead many, many decades. My Lamy Ion, which has also turned out to be a very nice pen. Uh, definitely has a bit of texture on its barrel and cap. When you uncap it, the uh, grip section has a little bit different texture. Of course, this is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, I found the converter doesn't seat the best. The uh, nib looks a lot like a Lamy uh, Safari nib, but it isn't. It's a bit different, just in shape. I decided to buy an extra fine just because I don't really have any in my collection, so I felt like I needed one. Till a minute ago, I thought maybe the Matador was an extra fine. Uh, the ink in it is a brand I don't have much of. Jibun Parfum Levand. Uh, and it's, I know it smells like mint to me, but whatever. Here, I'll hold the nib up close to the camera so you can smell it. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say lavender to me, but what do I know? Then, I went a little bit safer ink for this next vintage pen. Uh, this is an East German pen from the 1950s or 60s. You can see it's a... Line cap there. This is a Garant. And I believe I have another Garant. Alcor. No real branding there. The nib is stainless steel. But a very nice stainless steel and it has a very nice ink window. Uh, the ink in it, I had to look up the pronunciation of this one too. It's Dust of Moon. Jirban. Oops. B I N. Uh, Pussia. De Lune. Dust of Moon. I'm going to let this run dry now, um, but I'm still using my Centro pen that I love so much. And yes, shortly after I did my pens in use last week, one of my viewers did indeed buy the one that was for sale on MyUberPens.com, so I was excited about that. I know it's in a good home. The only thing I really don't like about this particular pen is no matter what ink I put in it, it seems to take forever to clean out. Then, I get to the pen I misnamed when I was doing my intro. This is a Caveco 37G. You can tell it's a Caveco because it has the nifty Caveco finial there that you still find on their pens today. This one is a... Oops, no. Piston turning knob, not a blind cap. I will not unscrew it, but it's a piston filling pen. Um, I haven't had supper yet, which uh, 
unfortunately maybe a little too audible in, the, in this video. The ink in this is Stipula Musk Green. This is a pen I I'm going to film a review on. Um, I don't know when it'll be published, but before it runs out, I stockpile my reviews. Although I have some words of wisdom about that coming up here. So Quebeco on the nib. Let's see. I don't see anything else there. Well, I do see some stuff. I can't read it though. Oh, 14 karat, 585. Wow. Yep. Okay. I know what that is. This is a Senator, which was a gift from a viewer last summer. I found it in an antique store or a flea market or something. Knew I liked Senators. The blind cat. Oops, you couldn't see that. The blind cap has a crack in it. I haven't been brave enough to try to fix it yet, but it holds on just fine, and the pen doesn't live a hard life. So we'll unscrew here. So we'll call this... I know that's not a semi-hooded nib. I don't know what to call that nib. And, like, seems to be the thing with Senators... I don't know the model number either, and I can't find it. So, Senator Cracked Blind Cap, we'll call it. If you can point me to a resource that identifies Senators, I would be, oops, I would be super thrilled. Uh, the ink was actually another gift from a viewer. The ink in this pen is uh, Diamine Cult Pens Deep Dark Blue. Which reminds me, I need to get a thank you written off to this viewer. As somebody pointed out in the comments last week, this is an attractive pen, this Waterman Hemisphere, but it is a very slim pen. I don't mind it, but I'm used to vintage slim pens. And I think of it like a pencil. You know, if, I, if I'm not writing with a fountain pen, my second favorite thing to write with is a wood pencil. And so far this seems to be the brightest ink of the batch. Since the unfortunate nib incident with my Lamy 2000, I've been using this Caveco V14S with a fine point. I like this pen a lot. Um, I could be happy using this as my daily writer. I have contacted Lamy. I have gotten an automated response and reply so far. And that's it. So I feel like maybe I need to contact him again. It's been a little over a week. So this pen just writes really nicely. It's not an exciting pen. It's vintage. It's from the 60s. Uh, but not exciting. You don't have a fun finish. You don't have a neat nib. It's just a very reliable, good daily writer type pen, which was it, what it was sold to be. And finally, we come to the Platinum 3776 with a Sheng Yo finish and a coarse nib. Uh, this pen has not been inked for quite some time. And it 
filmed as part of my upcoming video on the Platinum 3776 series uh, where I compare their nibs. Now, I will say a major hiccup has occurred in that process, which I will get to. Uh, and when I say major, I'm not exaggerating. But what a nice pen. What a beautiful finish. Now you know which one I have. Just beautiful. I don't get too excited about limited editions, but uh, this is just a very beautiful pen. They're limited editions, yes, you can pay a lot less dollars and get uh, the same nibs, but you can't get these amazing finishes. And this one, I just liked. I really liked the one that came out this year, but I bought, a, well, other pens instead. Right, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to pull out my review book which is an Apica CD notebook. And I have a platinum page where I compared how all the different nibs write. And I have been, since I filmed all this on May 7th, although there's a hiccup I'm going to get to here in just a little bit, but let's take a look here. So today is September. Ooh, it didn't want to write the first time there. Oh, that was bad. Could have been the angle I was holding it at, but I guess we'll never know now because it started right up right after that initial missing half a centimeter or whatever. So it's writing now, but I do have some bad news coming about this video, but let's keep it happy for a minute and we'll record it in here. This is a pen that writes dry very quickly because it's this nib, the course is like a double or triple broad. Drawn a blank. What ink was in this pen? They were all platinum black. So those are the pens that I have in use this week. Uh, I seem to be going through a spell of a lot of really dark, dismal inks. <laughs> I like these murky greens and this off purple, this moon dust, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I, I need to get some brighter colors in there. But I said I have bad news. So what I did over the summer, knowing how busy I would be with the school turning to one-to-one, -one and uh, I have several things going on, lots of irons in the fire, I thought, I'm going to get a jump on reviews. And I filmed 13 reviews. And you've seen some of them, but I batch filmed them all before school started. I was great. I was awesome. Pat myself on the back. One of the videos was about the Platinum 3776. I filmed the original writing samples here, all with the uh, Platinum Black, compared nibs, did close-ups on, you know, just, oh, let's look at the fine and the soft fine, and all that happy business. Worked awesome. So, this week, um, what would it have been? Tuesday, I guess. No, Tuesday, I was line judging. It must have been Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, I was dusting in the living room because my house is a little messy right now and I'm trying to get it back in shape. You know, like I said, busy. <laughs> and uh, bumped a disk drive. So all the reviews were kept on this external hard drive because my computer's hard drive is kind of full of photographs. So I keep them here. And it's been great. I've been using this disk drive for many years. I may have even been using it before I moved into this house. I'm not 100% certain on that though. But very nice drive. So I bumped it off my coffee table onto the floor and if you've 
of course, you've probably never been in my house, but there's no carpet in this house. It is laminate flooring upstairs, which is hard. And this hit the laminate flooring. And I thought, huh, hope it still works. Plugged it into the computer, which it turns out you shouldn't do when they have a hard shock like that. But, duh. Um, it made horrible grinding noises. And the computer could tell there was a disk attached, but couldn't get anything off of it. So, what happens when you do that, the hardware in here, because your, your hard disk is actually just a spinning plastic disk with some metal oxide coating on it. Um, I damaged the hardware in there. And then when I plug it into the computer, it destroys that fragile disk that's in there. So... All those reviews are gone. So I'm going to have to go back through my review book and figure out what they were. The ones that I need to refilm. Uh, so now what I'm doing is I'm just filming, like every time, I filmed two this week. The one you saw about the Parker Sonnet, and then I filmed an extra one about the Schaefer Balance. And I'm going to try really hard to get myself caught back up. And so the reason I'm bringing this up, I have always been awesome at backing up my computer. I have a Hard another one of these only it, it plugs in it's it's a it's a bigger disc I want to say four tera no not terabytes no maybe it is terabytes four of whatever it is yeah the computer holds five hundred gigabytes so it must be four terabytes anyway that I back up my computer on and then it has some extra space on it which why don't I just back up my files to there but anyway that's another story. Um, but anyway, I, uh, then I would put like my photographs and stuff on here that I just want to process later or, uh, want to save for a while, uh, videos I want to work on. So I would put all my video files on here, uh, driving videos, a lot of stuff on here. And, uh, but I never backed this up. Now, backing up, being good at backing up my computer has saved me, um, I don't know if I was filming reviews yet, but uh, years ago I had an Apple laptop and it just, the hard drive failed. And it was a MacBook Air, bam, dead. And no way I could recover anything off of it. So I bought this computer that I have now. This one's used, but it's very uh, good used one. Anyway, I uh, just hooked it up to my backup disk and uh, waited a little while and I had I was back in business and you know other than the inconvenience of a a uh, few weeks there without a computer oh well <laughs> but uh, I've never backed this up even though the space was right there why I can't, right now I'm just looking at it thinking how obvious is that? How likely is it I will destroy this and the backup hard drive at the same time? I mean, it could happen, but not very likely. I guess a house fire would do it. So, uh, why wasn't I? I do not have an answer for it. What I do have is a new one of these. <laughs> and it will be backed up regularly, just like I back up my computer regularly. Lesson learned, this time the hard way. Uh, what I have lost, I have been irregularly posting a series of driving videos. So far, we've gone down Interstate 94. I have everything up to Fargo on this computer. The rest of it, the really amazing part of northeastern North Dakota. So you won't be seeing that. Uh, I am told that I can take it to specialists who will... Uh, and this was from a tech person who does this professionally at a college. Uh, there are specialists who might cost around $400 and attempt to recover it. And I'm thinking, is it really worth that? I don't think so. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Back up your backups. Um, I uh, lost Wal uh, all the way up to Walhalla. I lost Pembina Gorge. I lost down to Devil's Lake. I lost Fort Totten, which has personal meaning to me. I lost the route from uh, Carrington down to Medina, which is gorgeous scenery, and it filmed beautifully. It was that perfect light. 
Uh, the next day, I, I, well, I spent the night in Steele. The next day, I drove uh, to, to Bismarck. And in response to one of my viewers, I drove around Bismarck and got some of the streets and so on. Uh, made sure I got the high school, which would have been the one they went to. And then I took the scenic route home via Highway 10 instead of going, you know, on the interstate. And, and it rained, you know, the rain actually made it look gorgeous. It was wonderful. And it's all gone. I have no backup driving footage because I had several drives on here uh, that I could, I could have pulled up. Right now I have nothing. So, I guess I have an excuse to go on a trip. Not tomorrow, though. I'm cleaning up my garden after a major freeze. Uh, I covered the tomatoes, but I ran out of covers after that, so... Tomatoes are still there. The peppers are done. The eggplant's done. The beans are done. Every, you know, everything's done except for, like, the broccoli and Brussels sprouts and kale and that kind of stuff. Uh, and the tomatoes, because I covered them. So, anyway, moral of the story, back this puppy up. Back it all up. You're not doing it because you need it all the time. You're doing it for that one time. Just like your seatbelt. I'm 42 years old. I've never in my life needed my seatbelt. But I wear it every time I drive. Why? Because that one time I will need it. And it may not happen to me. And I may never drop another one of these. I may never have another hard drive failure on a computer. But you do the backup just in case. So... I uh, mentioned on my review this week about downer endings. I guess I'm leaving this on a downer ending. Okay, another downer. Battery, or the, that camera just quit because uh, it ran into its upper limit of how long it can record video. Uh, but another downer. My Platinum 3776 footage is gone. The writing samples as I have uncapped pens are, are all gone. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. I do have my pens in use videos on YouTube. I can get the pertinent samples from there. It may not be quite as high quality as what I get from this camera that you don't see over here. But at least I'll have something. I will uh, refilm all the writing samples. Uh, it'll have to be after they're all uncapped. I still have three left to go. Uh, let's see. A medium, a uh, soft medium, and a fine. So I still have all them left to go. So... Darn it, I guess I'll have to punish myself and ink up all my Platinum 376s again. So that won't be so hard. But I will have to refilm all that. Probably not with Platinum Black Ink because I only have three cartridges of that left. So I'll, uh, But I'll, I'll be consistent, use the same ink so you can get the comparison. Then I will splice in the, oh, here's what it looked like footage. And, I don't know, maybe my technique's improved since I filmed it back on May 7th anyway. I don't know. <laughs> so uh yeah look forward to that eventually so three more pens that's three more months so we did a september unveiling so i have an october november and a december unveiling to do so we're looking at that platinum 3776 video probably being in january but i have a special treat coming next week uh, very close viewers of my channel especially readers of my comments may have an idea what's coming but there will be an extra video next week because I think it's in the mail right now. I think it's in my post office box. I had two packages, one I'm expecting, one I'm not. So I have the feeling that the one I'm not is the surprise you're going to see next week. It uh, may or may not take the place of pens in use. It depends on how much free time I have next week. But anyway, and I will continue to record videos. So that's an upper, something to look forward to. Uh, on my Instagram channel on IGTV, much later tonight, I, you will see a video where I discuss uh, lower cost and higher cost pens. And you may see a few pens there that have never been seen on this channel. So I do an IGTV. I, my Instagram has slowed down since school started. I uh, really should just take up my iPad and photograph something, but I haven't been. So anyway, look forward to that. So, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. 
And hey, do you want to talk about any of the pens I showed you, the Platinum 376, these wonderful offerings from uh, myoberpens.com? Maybe why am I using all these dim, dismal inks right now? Um, or perhaps you want to talk about backup horror stories or backup advice. In any case, I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.